Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where the eagle-eyed among you will note that I appear to be on the laptop today. It is indeed a laptop. I am on my holidays at the moment. Um, I've been pre-recording or I pre-recorded a few videos um, before I went away in order to give myself a break, but I didn't pre-record enough. So I knew I was going to have to record something while I was away, but then my laptop broke, <laughs> like terminally broke. Um, so I've had to order a brand new laptop. Um, big thank you to CyberPower who got it to me very quickly indeed, and especially Dave um, who works there. He is an absolute miracle worker. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've got, I've got my new laptop. I've got my recording software. Um, I've got a puzzle by Codec to have a look at as well. Badminton by Codec, which is, well, lots of you have suggested we have a go at this one. And it feels like a long time to me since I've done Codec on the channel. So I'm looking forward to having a go at this. It's got, it's got what's called a parity mirror um, in it, which is this red diagonal here. Um, and it, what it means is that I think if that digit was even, that digit would be even. Um, I'm not used to this new keyboard. Uh, it's, it's like a, it's a much more, um, I don't know, densely packed keyboard than my Alienware keyboard. It's even got a number pad on it. Now, some of you will be appalled to hear that I don't use the number pad. I never have. I've never, never have I achieved that, that me measure of sophistication with my fingers. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm, there may well be even more misclick clicks than usual today. Uh, this puzzle has four stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. Uh, lots of plaudits, as you might expect, um, but we'll be having a look at it, uh, and I'll read you the rules properly in a moment or two's time. What do I have to tell you before that? Not much. I've got to tell you that um, the monthly reward, uh, which was to Tennis Anyone, of course, by Glum Hippo, uh, a little bit of help from us, um, but um, that that's over on Patreon. And the closing date is the 20th, so in just two days' time. Um, so if you are still working on that, get your entry in as quickly as possible if you want to have a chance of winning the competition. Other than that, I have got loads of birthdays to catch up on. I have written to most of you who've been asking for birthday shout-outs over the last um, couple of weeks. But of course, with being away and having to pre-record videos, I've not been doing birthday shout-outs properly. But I am going to be correcting that over the coming days. And let me start by wishing Blake, uh, well, it's not a birthday, in fact, it's graduation. Um, a graduation from Ohio State University, no less, with a PhD in welding engineering. Uh, your wife, Siobhan, wrote to us, Blake, and said you'd appreciate a shout out. You've been following the channel for a while, so Blake, very well done. That is awesome, awesome, awesome intellect and awesome graduation skills. Um, Next, Eric. Eric, it is actually your birthday today. You, <laughs> well, your partner, Jessa, um, basically hit, hit the absolute sweet spot in terms of getting me back on the birthday train. You're over there in Lexington Park, Maryland. Oh, I've done it again. I said Maryland, haven't you? I know I'm not meant to do that. I know it's not Maryland. Um, and now my mind, <laughs> you'll have to forgive my, my English pronunciation. Uh, of the state. Um, I, I get that wrong every time. Uh, anyway, next. Oh, these, yeah, no, the next ones are all late birthdays. So, Jessica, you turned 45, I think, on August the, August the 5th. You turned the secret age. I know this because your daughter, Michelle, wrote to us. Happy birthday for then. I hope you had chocolate cake. Um, John, you turned 29, also on August the 5th. And I know this because your girlfriend, Jessica, uh, wrote to us about that. Hope you had chocolate cake. And then Joel. Now, Joel, you turned 18 on August the 8th. And I know this because basically a lot of the world wrote to me about this. Um, your family in Dorset, uh, your friends, Liam and Rob, wrote separately. And I think Liam and Rob both have birthdays. Um, or I think you're all turning 18 within the same two-week period. So I wish you all many happy returns. Um, and Joel, I know you've started setting and you have been sending puzzles into the channel. Um, I'm not sure if any have been accepted yet. Um, I couldn't check today. Um, you know, I cannot tell you how stressful it is to have a new computer. I just cannot tell you. Um, but but keep, be, keep setting, and I've no doubt, sooner or later, one of your creations will appear on the channel. 
uh, and we wish you the best with that. And that, I think, is all the news. I'm looking at my handwritten notes. We can discard those. I'm going to get to sort of codec. This is great. Um, let me put my hands on the keyboard in approximately the right place and read you the rules of oh, badminton. And I think it must be called badminton because presumably this this parity mirror thing, there's going to be something going on, like, like I don't know, like a shuttlecock going backwards and forwards across the line um, in, in ways I can't really appreciate at this point, but that, that's why I think it must be called badminton. Um, now Kodak will tell me it's a homage to Hamish Hawke and the Mauritian badminton doubles champion 1973, which I've already talked about recently. Um, I remember recording that video. Um, anyway, normal normal Sudoku rules apply. So digits one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box, once each. The thin diagonal running southwest to northeast in blue. So this blue diagonal uh, must contain the digits one to nine once each. Okay, so this diagonal just has to have one of the digits one to nine once each along it. So that's fairly normal. Now, odd even parity is reflected across the red diagonal running northwest to southeast. Uh, and luckily there's an example here because when I first read the rules, and I was thinking about reflected. Uh, for some reason, I thought that must meant the parity was different across the parity mirror. But of course, it's not. So, for example, it says if row six, column two is odd. So if this is odd, then row two, column six, which is that one, which is, is its reflected sort of cell around. You know, if we were to fold the grid in half along the red line, these two cells would hit one another. And this row two, column six also has to be odd. So these two cells both have to be odd. Um, and digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So, okay, so for example, I can see there is a there is a three cell arrow there. Imagine that was one, two, three, uh, which, pro no, no, I was about to say, which doesn't work for the parity mirror, but actually one and three do work for the parity mirror. That would be a six. One plus two plus three equals six, and that works. Um, and that is all of the rules. So now I can reset, reset my clock. And now we can get cracking, I think. So do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, okay, so let's get cracking. And Codec has been very kind here because there are some three cell arrows uh, where the digits along the arrow have to all be different. Look, these three digits all have to be different. So we just did this with the example. One plus two plus three is six. So this cell cannot be less than six. So let's do that there. The same must be true of that one. And the same is also true, look, of this one. And let's just take a scan and see if we can see any others. Um, no. All right, but this little um, circle here seems to get projected into that square, doesn't it? So these two digits are the same, and that therefore, oh, okay, therefore I'll make them both green. Somehow my fluorescent green has gone away. Oh, I bet that's because it's a new computer, and it doesn't understand that I've already, I've already registered an interest in fluorescent green. Oh, I, I, I'm, I won't have time to to recreate that now, but I'll try and remember to do that at some point. Now those two cells have to be the same, look. Um, oh, I see, right, okay, so this one gets its own color. What do I mean by its own color? Well, I can now see that this digit, with this purple digit, look, which is a six, seven, eight, nine, eight or nine, is not the same as green and it's not the same as blue. So these three digits are three of the four digits, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, which is the fourth then? I bet you there's another circle here that we can label with. Um, no, I don't, maybe there isn't actually. I thought there would be, you know, we'd be able to get a collection of all four of them, but suddenly I see I can't do that. So it's going to be now, I mean, short little two cell arrows. I figure these are just disambiguating arrows. 
So it's got to be the parity mirror, <laughs> he says confidently. So what does the parity mirror tell us? It, it tells us that that cell is the same parity as green. I don't really even know how to how to pencil mark that though. I mean, I can't make that green because that will imply to me that this cell is the same digit as green. I said, well, no. I mean, if green was six, for example, this could be six, but it could be eight. If, if green is seven, this could be seven or it could be nine. Where is purple in box? Five. Purple can't go on its own line and purple is different from green and blue. So purple is in one of those four cells. This is, and this is the equivalent of green, isn't it? This square here for blue. The, what's the equivalent of this square? It's that square. So this square is the same parity as purple. This is weird, actually. I don't understand what's going on. Um, these two cells are the same parity. We saw that in the example. But, ah, okay, so these two cells are the same parity. Is that what we're learning? Ah, so these three cells are the same parity. Right, okay, suddenly I've had an idea. Right, um, because of the parity mirror, I don't know what the parity of those two cells is, but I know it's the same. So if they're odd or even, they sum to even. And that means whatever the parity of this is, it must be mimicked here. Because, I mean, if this is odd, we're adding to an even digit, which is the sum of these two, we're adding an odd digit. So that's going to be odd as well. If this was even, these are three, these would, well, the effect of that is that these two, which are even, is added to an even, and that would be even. So this one has the same parity as this one, which has the same parity as this one, because this one and this one cross the parity mirror together. So those three are of the same parity. Now, if they were even, that would be three of the four even digits. Oh, well, they're not even then. Ha, 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 right. I see. That's very clever and very weird. Right. Oh, oh my goodness. Right, sorry. Okay, I'm in holiday brain mode. Right, the, the way to understand this actually is far more straightforward than I've just, than the thoughts I've just been having. Okay, what we should have done is to do, well, if we look at these four digits at the top, of the blue diagonal, we know that the pa whatever the parity is of these four digits, it's mimicked down there, isn't it? So, so if we took those eight digits together, we must have sort of an, an equilibrium in the, in, uh, we must have an even number of parities <laughs> for odds and evens. Because, I mean, whatever the disposition was, you're, you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're creating two of it. So if this was even, that's even as well. So you create two evens. So, but we know that the overall diagonal has a mismatch because um, there are five odd digits in Sudoku, one, three, five, seven, and nine, and four even digits. So we actually know that those four digits must be two odds and two evens. Because if they weren't, um, if they were three of one and one of the other, that would imply there were six of one parity along the diagonal, which is clearly wrong. So this must always be the balancing figure. It is, it is the fifth odd digit along the diagonal. And if that's odd, well, this, this would have shortcut a lot of what I just did. Because knowing this is odd tells us this is odd tells us this is odd by parity. So this is in fact uh, seven or nine. This is odd, which is one, three or five. Can't be seven along a three cell arrow. And this is anything that's odd, I think. That's not the same as these two. So this, so that cannot be purple. Um, although this one and this one could be green and blue respectively. 
Now, do I know? Do I now know the parity of these two digits somehow? I know they're the same. No, okay, they could, bizarre, oh, my phone is buzzing at me, what's that? No, okay, that's just some message about a news flash. Um, these could both be odd, couldn't they? Because if three odd numbers are adding up to, well, it would have to then be adding up to nine, they could be one, three, and five. They could, if, if this is seven, this has to be a two, four pair. I don't know what to do now. Uh, I really, I really, really don't know what to do. What's this meant to be telling me then? I've got. I haven't got the clue. No. I know that. Oh, sorry. No, I, I don't know anything at the moment. I know. I know. Well, I suppose I know at least one of those is even, because because they're different from purple. So this couldn't be a seven nine pair. So at least one of these is even. <laughs> That's just so rubbish, isn't it? Um, at least one of these is even. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing this at the moment. It's bizarre. It's a. It's actually really quite. It's really quite um, intriguing that this this solves because I don't feel like we've been given any information of. We've got a load of two cell arrows. A two cell arrow is not important, is it? Even from from a parity perspective, what do we know about a two cell arrow? Anything? We know that the total of it. We know those three cells all together add up to an even number, because we could think of this as um, we well. Let's think about the sum of the arrow as being x. Then we know we put x in the circle. So the sum of the three cells together is 2x, which is even. So I know that those six cells are even all together. Now, there is a secret in Sudoku. Um, Jessica turned the secret age, in fact. The secret, of course, is, and it's something I only tell my favorite people. Um, but obviously, if you're sharing my holidays with you with me, you're definitely one of my favorite people. Uh, the secret is that any complete row, any complete column, uh, oops, any complete box of a Sudoku contains the digits one to nine once each. And therefore, uh, you can work out the sum of a complete row, a complete column, or a complete box. It's the sum of the digits one to nine, which is 45, which is odd. So I know those add up to even, so I know these three add up to odd. And that's just the world's most useless deduction. Is there something from a, else from a parity mirror perspective I know about a three cell arrow? No, no, maybe it's this one though. That one, I know those two are the same parity using the mirror. I know these two are the same parity using the mirror. I know these two are the same parity. Um, the laptop fan on my new computer has turned on. It's quite quiet though. It's a lot. It's a lot quieter than my old laptop fan. What about? Ah, uh, yeah, what about, I know those are the same. So if they were even, it would have to be two, four. 
No, actually, that's not even true. They'd have to be 2, 4 if this is 7. But if these are 9, they could be 2, 6. Ah. Or, or, no, they could be 2, 4 with a 3 as well. 2, 4 with a 3, 2, 4 with a 1 for 7, or 2, 6 with a 1 for a 9. Okay, that's not helpful. If the what about if they were odd then? If they if those are odd, then either you've got four evens there, or oh yeah, then you've got to have two. Ah, can you not have? Can you not have an? Oh yeah, here's something interesting. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just think about this. I've suddenly had a thought about those three cells. I can't have only, ah, this is it. I think this is it. My brain is slowly about to conclude something. It's not possible that the, the colored cells on the red diagonal, these two cells are only one even digit. Because if only one of these is even, because of the parity mirror, you can't you can't get four even digits in box five. Because if, for example, if this is even, we know that's even, so they always pair up. They always pair up unless they're on the red diagonal. So if you only have one even digit in these two red squares, we know this is odd, but if you only have one there, you need three more because you need two, four, six, and eight. There are four, four even digits in Sudoku. And you can't do it because each one of these is adding exactly two to the count of one on the diagonal. So either, oh, this is beautiful. It's so clever. It's so clever and simple once you see it. So either these are both even or then neither of them are even. And we know that it's not possible for neither of them to be. I almost said this about 10 minutes ago, but you can't have neither of these being even because then these have to be a seven, nine pair and they break this square. So in fact, both of these are even, which means we know what they are. They've got to be a six, eight pair, which means these are not seven or nine, which means these are even. And I think what I'm gonna do is label them like that. Now, does that mean that we know what these are? <laughs> no, it doesn't, because I know we've got two evens, and I know one of these pairs is even. I don't know which one, I don't think. Oh, that's extraordinary. So even though... That's extraordinary. So, it, so all I've got from this is these two digits, actually. Oh, I was about to say, is it nine in the middle row? I don't think it is. But um, I was suddenly thinking, what digits can't you put on arrows? And you can't put nine on an arrow, not on a two cell arrow anyway, because the circle would contain a 10 at least. So I was looking at those squares, but nine, nine can be in one of these two in the middle box. And it can also be here. Um, Wow, okay, that's most peculiar. All right, so maybe I've got to do the same thing in boxes one and nine. I've got to have, I've got to have an even number of even digits in these three cells, and the same is true down here. So it's either two even digits. Oh, I know what it's gonna be. It's going to be the fact that sixes and eights on three cell arrows have to have ones on them. Aha, yes, okay. So let's put this in. Oh, I don't think I've got all my, I don't think I've got all my tools opened up here because I, I, I was clicking spacebar and I didn't have the usual number of clicks. Look, I'll turn on everything. What else should I turn on here? Um, I don't know, import, export, advanced, what's those? Um, to my Valentine, experimental. Sven's created all of these fantastic things. 
I wonder if the uh, three in the corner things turned on. I don't know. We'll have to see. Right, but now, okay, so now, right, so now we know that these digits are no higher than five, actually, because neither of these can be higher than eight. It's strange, though, because even when you know things like that, it's not helpful at all to knowing, for example, knowing these two digits are of the same parity. I mean, we don't know what the parity of this is anyway, but even if, even if we did know exactly what this number is, it has no real effect on the quantum of that number. Okay, it's going to be, so what's it going to be, Codec? What have you done here? Codec is a sneaky old fellow. Well, he's not old, actually, he's young. But Codec is a sneaky fellow. So, sneaky Codec, what have you done here? Why? I think it might be the middle row. Okay, what's the, what's the parity here? So, the parity of these two is the same as the parity of those two. The parity of these two is the same as the parity of these two. Parity of these three is the same as the parity of these three. The parity of these three is the same as the parity of those three. I mean, This is not actually very easy at all, is it? What about... What about... I've got nothing here. I've got... Oh, uh, Sudoku. No. I suddenly thought maybe I could say something about blue. I mean, blue is in one of those cells. Green is in one of these cells, but I mean, we've got so there are so few arrows to use here. I mean, whichever one of these is eight. No, it's not even true. If that was eight, then eight's a little bit restricted. Well, it's not really even a little bit restricted. It would just probably, and it could even, no, it's not that. Because this is just nonsense. I'm sorry, I'm talking nonsense now. I'm trying to spot something, but I'm just failing. If that's even, it's got to be four, actually, because it's C, six, and eight. These are different versions, aren't they? This is a pair. So why is, why is that even? That would be a, that's a codec -y step. Why is this even? That would make this, see, that would be massively powerful. If that is four and that's one, three, therefore, that would be five, which would mean this was nine. That is actually, that's really interesting because the effect of this being even is massive. So what's the parity effect of that there? Why is this even? If this, if this is not, well, if this, for this not to be even, this would be odd. And then by the secret, these would have to both be even. So these, these would have the same parity, which would mean those would have the same parity. Oh, which is actually, that's really difficult to do. If that, that couldn't work with even digits. So these would have to be odd. I think that's possible. Um, No, whoa, 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 it's not possible. Wow, wow, so this is, this. So I'm not sure if I'm doing this in the right order, but there's definitely a real point here. 
I mean, because this this feels, I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. So what I noticed is that these two cells are different. And that if this was even, because it's summing a two cell arrow, it's really difficult for this to be even. It has to be four, because it can't be two, because you can't double one the arrow. So I thought, well, if that's even, that seems to make this cell even. So can we dis can we force this? To, can we show this must be even by proving that this cell can't be odd? Because if this was odd, obviously, then this would be odd. Well, if this is odd, remember by the secret, the sum of these nine cells here is, is odd because it's 45. But we know that those add up to an even number and those add up to an even number using our algebra on, on, on the arrow and the circle together. So if that's odd, the sum of those seven cells is also odd, which means that to retain that odd parity for the whole row, these have to add up to an even number. So they're either both even or they're both odd. Now watch what happens here. If these are all even numbers, uh, how do I show this? <laughs> Let's say E. I don't want to use colors. So I normally use um, I normally use blue for even, but I've already used blue for coloring down here. If these are all even, the reason this doesn't work is this: these three cells um, again, because remember we've got to have in these three cells we've got to have an even number of even digits in order to make the it possible to fill this box using the parity mirror. But the problem with this is that that's going to put a second even digit on this three cell arrow. And I don't think that's possible because if I've got two even digits here, how can I possibly make this arrow add up to six or eight? Well, the only way I could do it would be to have a fifth even digit in the, in the box. So say I made that, well, in fact, look, the, the other way of seeing that is I'm meant to have a one on that arrow and I wouldn't be able to have one. Because um, if we have two even digits on the, on the arrow and we're adding to an even, we need another even digit. One is most, most certainly not even. So these are not even, which means they must be odd. But they can't be odd for a very similar reason, but it's really subtle. Because now um, we've got to look at these three cells and ask how many of these cells are even. Well, we're adding up to six or eight. And we know one of the digits on there is one. So we've got to have exactly one even digit. But we can't only have one even digit in these three cells, because if we do have only one even digit, let's say that's even and that's odd. So we've got one even digit um, on the arrow now. So it can work from the point of view of adding up to six or eight. Imagine it was one, two, three. Well, how do we fill this box now using the parity mirror constraint to have four even digits altogether? You can't do it. I could make both of those even. And now I've got a very difficult choice because if I make that even, there are five evens in the box. If I make it not even, there aren't. There are only three. You can't do it. It's, it's very subtle. It's very subtle and beautiful, actually. But yes, it's playing. It's playing on the fact that the arrow, because it's summing to an even, has got to have one even on it. And the difficulty that leaves you with this and the parity mirror. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's incredibly clever anyway. And I'm not totally sure. I know, I, I, some variant of this, I'm sure, is important in the solve. Whether it's important now or not, I couldn't tell you. But it's definitely right. And it's so beautiful, I'm going to use it. So we can prove oh, another message. That's fine. Um, so we've proved that this can't be odd. So it's even. And if that's even, this is even. So it's four, which means this is one, three. And this is going to do wonders. Look, because now that's five. Now this can't add up to seven anymore. So it's nine. This is a one, three pair, which is, oh, oh, hang on. Look, something's on. Some sort of conflict che checker is on. Ah, I don't, I don't approve of that. That's cheating. Um, it's basically doing Sudoku for me that I would normally struggle mightily with. How do I do this? Check on finish. I don't want check on finish. I think that's the thing that says, if you fill in the puzzle, it'll suddenly say, you finished the puzzle. Um, 
conflict checker is it that off let's go back yes okay there we go so there's not so it's not highlighting the fact that i've actually in fact i know that's a seven i'll suddenly realize look this is one three five and nine along the diagonal so now all of these squares have to be even two four six and eight because we know that the blue diagonal is full of one set of the digits one to nine well that's not a two you can't put double one there without breaking Sudoku. Um, okay, let's just let's just take stock. What have we now learned that we didn't know before? We know that this digit is is definitely even, don't we? So we, let's put that in. Yes, in fact, look, what well, this is exactly what we should do. We should use the fact that we know this is even, and these two are both odd. So those two are both odd. So they're 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. They're not 5 because of this. They're not 9 there because you can't put 9 on a 2 cell arrow. So this is 1, 3, or 7. If it's 7, this would have, if it's 7, this would have to be 8. Look, it would have to be 8. Um... If it's seven, this would have to be eight because it couldn't be nine. So this would be a one, which would fix the middle box. Uh, <laughs> what does this mean? So hang on. If we know this is even now, we know all of these are adding to even. So these two add to odd. So this is an even and an odd. Which means that, okay, all right, so let's, let's try and record some thingies here. So these two cells are different parity, which I will use a, a little green line to indicate. Those two must have different parity then because of the parity mirror. So whatever parity this is, let's say that's even, this will be odd and this will be odd by the parity mirror. Now... These three are the same as those, oops, same as these three, and overall they add up to even. Oh, that doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really to prove anything. We know these three add up to even, but, but that's there's nothing down here to sort of tell us what we're supposed to know about that. Um, okay. Ah, oh, goodness me. Right, where does nine go in row one is a good question now. Nine can't go here in the circle. Nine can't go in that circle by Sudoku. Nine can never go on an arrow. It doesn't seem to be able to go there. Can't go on an arrow. Nine goes in the corner. That's huge. That, ah, no, no, come back. All is forgiven. I want to go back to numbers. Right, that's nine. Okay, so now we know this is not one. We know both of these are now even, which means they're two, four, six, or eight. That's not eight because it's on a three cell arrow. In fact, it's not six, is it? Because a three cell arrow with a six on it would have to be adding up to nine with six, one, two, and this definitely doesn't do that. So this is, right, so this is two or four, and it is the only even digit um, on this arrow because we know there's a one on it which is odd. So we need another odd digit to get the parity back correct. So these squares are from one, three, and five. Yeah, okay, five can go in. Five can go in because five, one, two would add up to eight. Ah, but, oh no, <laughs> they're, on the, they're on the parity mirror. So we don't learn anything about parity. Um, Seven in the top row might be worth thinking about. That's not four. That's not four. Uh, what does this mean? I don't know. I don't know. Um, we know that that's even. That's right. I oh, I see. Oh, this is. 
Oh, hang on. Um, yeah, that, I think I've missed something here. Wait a minute. Let me just think about this for a moment. You've got, if you've got one even digit, you've got to have an odd, is it true? To, is it true? Yes. I think you've got to have an odd number of even digits on a three cell arrow string. What I mean by that is that this is even, which means that these two cells either both contain two evens or they contain two odds. So the number of even digits on the arrow is one or three. And if, But if the even digit flicks and it's on the arrow rather than in the circle, it's the same logic. It's exactly the same logic. Right, so each three cell arrow either contains one even or three evens. One even or three evens. Right. Now, the, the thing that's interesting here is this can't have three evens because that would put so many evens in the top row. There would be five even digits in row one. So these are both odd, which is, they're both odd and they're not seven or nine. So they're one, three or five, which means that now, Seven, right, so seven is on this arrow somewhere. So if seven, if seven was on the arrow rather than in the circle, because this can't be nine, well, this can't be nine, so it would have to be eight. And that's beautiful, that doesn't work. If this is, so we can see, if we look at the top row, we can see seven is in one of these three squares. If seven is on the arrow, it's got to be a, with a one adding up to eight, but then those two squares add up to eight because there'll be a three, five pair. We get two eights in the top row. So seven can't be on the arrow and seven goes in the circle. That's gorgeous as well, which means this is not seven. So this square is four, six. So it'd be very useful to know this was six because that would force this digit. Um, don't know how to do that, but that's okay. That's odd parity. So that's odd parity, and is one three or five using parity mirror. I've got a one three five triple in the box. So the in fact the one is in one of those squares. So that's not one. So this is three or five. These two squares are even. Two four six eight. We really don't know very much about even digits, though, do we? If this is 8, this is 3, 5. Oh, this is not 4, because that's going to need to... If it was 4, this would be a 1, 3 pair, and that would break that digit. So this is a 6 or an 8. And it's therefore capable... Well, it's, it's either blue or green. And from that, we can deduce something, probably. Ah, OK. Where does green go in this column is a good question now. Because green can't go in those three squares and green can't. Green is not blue and green can't go on blue's arrow because okay, it can't. Add it. Digits adding up to six or eight are always going to be one, two, threes, fours or fives. So in fact, green down here is in one of those three squares, which means green, which is even, has got to go there. And that is green. Now let's try and repeat that trick for blue. So blue, yeah, we can nearly do it. Blue is in one of those three. Um, because blue, blue is not these. So blue is up here. It doesn't work as well, actually, does it? It's not quite as powerful. Um, no, I was about to say we can do something by parity mirror. I'm not actually sure we can. How, what about e odd digits, sorry, in column five? One, two, three. It depends where the one is. If that was odd, 
that would be there. Ah, hang on, I must one of these at least must be odd because because this this three cell arrow is either one, two, three or one, three, four or one, two, five. In each case, there's only one even on it. So it's not possible for this to be two even. So that's at least one odd here. One, two, three, four. Is it possible for... How does this middle box work? <laughs> Those two are the same parity and these... Ah, yes, I see. Look, so we can do this. Um, what, what do I mean by this? Well, these are the same parity. And that parity is different from this parity. So this is one of each parity. Now that I think is going to give us a full count for the column five, but I might be wrong. So this is one of each. So in terms of odd parity, I've got one, I've got two, sorry, three, four. So one of these exactly is odd, which means one of them is even, which means I suppose I can do the same thing. It's like that, isn't it? Now, if this, if, if there is an even digit in one of these two squares, that digit is odd, and that's one, three, or five, which is the equivalent of this one, which is one, three, five, or nine now, by parity mirror. Now, let's repeat that trick on row five, because we know this is one of each. So we've got one, two, three, four odds. So one of these is odd. One of these, right, one of these is odd, and one of these is even. Let me just double check that. One, two, three. Yes, that gets us to the correct count of evens. But we said that any three cell arrow in total contains an odd number of even digits. So this is not even, this is odd. So that's got to be one, three, five, or seven. It can't be nine because it's on an arrow. And the equivalent of this one is that one, which is now one, three, five, seven, or nine. It's not, this isn't quite working, is it? It's close, I think. I'm not quite understanding it though. It's, it's, um, Not quite understanding it, sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I can't, I can't see how to do it. Um, what, what am I meant to be appreciating here? Is this, is this somehow obvious? Maybe I can do better with but loads of these little sort of two cell sequences. Nine is nine is real no, it's not though, is it? Nine nine could absolutely be here. Oh sorry, that's a phone. Okay. That's fine, that's nothing important. Um Four in the middle box is in one of those positions. So if it was here, this would be a two. If it was here, this would be a two. I see, I see. So we've got seven and nine to put on one of these little ligatures that we've drawn in. I know that there's an even digit, which is two or four in one of these squares and in one of these squares. Um, do we know, we do, we do definitely know there's a five on this arrow. It's either five with a one or five with a three. So, and what do we know this is? We know this is either four at three, which would make this one at five, adding up to six, or this is six and one, which would make this three, five, eight. In 
that's six, that's eight. Does that somehow matter? Six, eight. Uh, I'm, losing, I'm losing track of this. If that's six, then that's eight as well. So, I don't know. If that's four, that's two. Four, two. Then this would be six or eight. So it would have to be, oh, hang on. Oh, that's it. Ah, it's, it's the same trick. It's the same trick for this, but for this, it's really clever. It's really clever, right? And it's completely, completely fair. It's just I didn't see it. But six and eight are as a pair looking at that digit. And that gives me a two, four pair in row one, which makes this a six, which means this is a one, this is an eight, this is an eight, this is an eight, this is an eight, this is a six, this is a six. Oh, how beautiful. Now this is five, well, it's not five. That's one, two, and three. It's not one, look, it's the one up here, which means this is one. Now, does this do, does this finish it? Maybe one is not out. So the one and three come out of this square. Um, it doesn't matter that I know this is one. That doesn't mean this is one. Uh, this is now, okay, so this is 3, 5, which is great. This is not 8 anymore. Um, so in fact, I suppose we can make that green, can't we? Green is one of the, oh, green we know. Green has got to be there, look, because this square is not allowed to be 8. So this square is not allowed to be 8. 6 is in one of these two squares. This square is not allowed to be 8. Oh, in fact, look, we've got an 8, of course, on this diagonal now. So we can, we can get rid of... So we've got 2, 4, and 6 left on the positive diagonal. We've got the 1, 3 in the middle box that's resolved now by this 1. So we've got some more tidying up we can do. Three is in one of these three positions in case that's going to matter. This is not one or three. Uh, can we now... Oh, hang on. That's an interesting thought. So, okay. Because I know these are of opposite parity, in row five, seven and nine, one of them has to be on this arrow because I can't put I, can, I can't put seven and nine into those squares. Only one of them can go into those squares. So then obviously, if it, if nine is over here, nine has to go in the circle. And then this would be even. It would be two, four, or six. That actually looks very reasonable, doesn't it? If seven is on, if seven is on this arrow, um, we know that this. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, hang on. This is a problem. This is a problem, Houston. We have a problem. Although seven could be here. Yeah, this is odd, isn't it? This square here. So if I do make this odd, we know it would have to be a seven or a nine because one of those digits is on this arrow and they're both seven and nine are both odd. So, th so if this is odd, that's even, but have would have to be bigger than seven and it would have to be eight, which it cannot be. So the odd digit is this one, which is a seven or a nine. And therefore, this digit is even. And that's great. It's going to resolve the parity mirror down here. And I, th I probably put some, some sort of restriction on this square. Although that's less clear to me. Because, I mean, actually, if that's 7 and that's 9, that could be 2, 4, or perhaps 6, oddly. Or evenly, in fact. So that's even by parity mirror. That's odd. That's 6 now by the power of grey skull um, we've got the left with a 2 4 on the positive diagonal 
6 is in one of these three squares. 2, ah, is this it? So 2 is now in one of those squares by Sudoku, which means 4 is in one of these squares um, because of the parity mirror, and 4 can't go there. So that can't be 2. The 2 and the 4 get resolved, which means these squares are the 7, 9 pair. Now, do we know the order? We don't. <laughs> we don't believe it, but we don't. Okay, that's rotten. Uh, that's not two. So this is four or six. So this can only have two options. It can't be seven anymore. So that's come right down. It's tumbled down to be three or five. That, oh, good grief. It's still, still very much incomplete, isn't it? Uh... Oh dear, dear, dear. All right, six is in one of those squares by Sudoku. Six is in one of these. Don't know what that means. Um, could we? <laughs> I don't know. Could we do? Anything clever with, I don't, I really haven't got a clue what it is I'm meant to look at now. It could be one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Is there some magic that we can work? No, I was about to say with sevens, but no, that doesn't seem to be it. Twos, no. One, I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe I've got to, oh, I know what it'll be. It'll be that I know this arrow adds up to eight now. Oh, I don't believe it, it's not. If that's two, that could be one five. If it's four, it could be one three. I still don't know. Oh, that's extraordinary. Uh, three, what on earth? What on it? One is down here. Is that somehow important? Golly, golly, gosh. Um, three. No, I don't know where three goes. One. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I don't know. So Codec is still maintaining full levels of deviousness here. And we're going to have to come up with something new. Um, hmm. I'd love to be able to come up with something new for you. I bet you, I bet there's some way I know what the order of this is. Four, six pair. Is that somehow helpful? Do I know which of these is six? I suppose I've still got to bear in mind, don't I, that of these three squares, I've got to have either no evens or two evens. It'd be very helpful if it was two evens there, because then that would be even, and all those four would be even, and all of those five would be odd. And that might not be possible, but actually might be as well. Oh no, okay, that's just not possible because these three are odd. So you can't have those three as being odd as well. You wouldn't have enough even digits in column seven. Okay, so is that, have we just learned something real or not? We've learned those two and not even. We do we haven't learnt anything from that, I'm afraid. I wish we had, but but I don't think we can I don't think we can begin to claim that, unfortunately. We're going to have to do more thinking. Um and that is a daunting prospect indeed for me. <laughs> um could we do something? Have we exploited <laughs> all instances of the parity mirror that we possibly could have. It's very hard for me to know, actually. I mean, I'm staring at this. Oh, hang on. That square 
That's even. That's a two. Yeah, I didn't see this. Right, look. If we look at the parity mirror, we've learned this is even. Uh, no, we, yeah, okay. I think I even thought about the fact I knew that was one and did it impact on this, but it doesn't. But the fact we know this is even means this is even and it sees four, six, and eight. So I think that has to be a two, which means it's not blue. That's not gonna do anything, you know. That's not gonna do anything. I suppose it makes both of these odd. It makes these one, three, five, five, and seven, which are the equivalent of the, oh, no, the equivalent of these is these, which I think we already knew. Oh, bobbins. Okay, so this is not one, this is not three. Seven is definitely down here, because seven is not in those two squares. Okay. So six, six is the blue digit, so we can, we can fill that in in case that's in some way important. Don't think it is though, is it? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. We could. I don't know. No, I haven't got anything here. Uh, no, I was about to try and use this one as a parity mirror, which is totally and utterly bogus as a deduction. Um, Okie dokie. What could it be? Nine somehow? And nines? Oh, nine. Oh, yes. Look, seven and nine are a pair there by Sudoku. That's quite good. That seems to give me a six here. So we'll take that, we'll, we'll blueify that six, de-blueify this square. We get a seven, nine pair here. Ah, seven, nine pair in row six. So I now need one, two, five, eight. So this square is a five, actually. It just is a five. I actually got all the other digits. So this isn't five. This isn't six. It's two, four pair in box one. This is six, which is blue. Blue is in one of those two squares in box three, which is mirroring the position of, okay, so ah, so six R, ah, this is interesting. Okay, yes, look at where six goes in column eight. Now we can see it's not those squares because of this. We can see it's not these squares because of the six pencil marks. So six is in one of those three, but it seems to also be in one of those three. So it's actually going in the circle there, which is probably going to be mighty important. But I just want to check and see whether I've done all my Sudoku. These squares are going to be one, two, three, and four. That's not three, that's not two. Um, Two, three, and four. It looks like there's something going on here, but I can't see what it is. Eight. Yeah, eight is in one of those squares. Let's put that in in case it's going to matter. Uh, ah, yeah, look, I've got a two, four pair in this column. I don't think I've seen that before. And a seven, nine pair. So I need, I need one, three, five, and eight. Three, five, eight into these squares. We're getting a bit, I'm getting a bit excessive with my pencil marking here. I don't like doing this. I think for a two, four pair in this row. So maybe it is this square. Didn't I work out this couldn't be even? I did, yeah, I did work out. I worked out that those two can't be even together because if they were, this would be even to make this add up. That would be even by parity mirror, four evens there, as, as all the evens for box nine. These three would be odd, and that seems to break this column. So actually, this is odd in the corner. It's one, three, or five, I suppose. It's not three, actually, because you can't put double three on the arrow. So this is a one, five pair, adding up to six. That's massive, look at that, out of nowhere. He says, okay, that's odd, so that's odd, and it's not one or five or three, so that's seven or nine. It's a fascinating puzzle, isn't it? It's very, very clever. 
and quite hard. Oh, I was about to say nine. I can place it in the box, but I can't. Um, what could it be? It. Oh, I don't know. Uh, feels like it's. It feels like it's this box that's important. Oh, I know what it is. Yes. Remember that. How do we fill this box? We've got to have an even number of even digits in these three squares, and we have one, so that's got to be even. It's not actually obvious to me that it is helping, but it's got to be two, four, or eight, doesn't it? That is forced, which I'm sure is important. Oh, this row, I've got a seven, nine pair. One. Yeah, one, two, and eight into these squares. That's forced as well, so we can actually get rid of the pencil mark there. One, two, and eight is sure. That's not eight. Okay, can we use the parity mirror? Although we don't actually know the parity of any of these cells. Do we? We know that's very restricted. <laughs> um, two, eight, four, six. So we need to place three, five, Seven and nine, so that square. I don't think we know. I'm not sure. Three, five, seven, or nine. We know that these two digits are the same, and they're the same as that digit. Okay. Don't know what to do with that knowledge. Um, Maybe we've got to pencil mark column four, where we need four, five, seven, and nine. Although I don't like the look of that. That's four, five, or nine. Um, this is even. It feels like this being even was an interesting deduction. Why does that matter? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is it something to do with... I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue what it is. It couldn't be... I don't know. I don't know. Um, is it to do with threes, threes and fives? No, I hear you all chorus. Um, is it to do with ah, odd numbers in column eight? One, two, three, four. Do we know what this one is? If that was odd, why does that have to be odd? It's the equivalent of that one. See, all of the, uh, that, oh, well, no, all of these down here, unless I've missed something, which is very possible, these have all got two parities in them as options. Three, four, five, that one. Is there some reason that this one is restricted? Eight, four, six. These are both odd. That's odd. So that's three odds in this column. Do we know? Do we know much more? Uh, how do we have to think about this? We know if we think about those two digits, that they are the equivalent of these two digits, aren't they? And we know that these can't both be three. One of them can be three, but only one. So there's only one odd digit possible. So either this is double even. Now, is there a reason that can't be double even? Don't, well, if it was double even, that would be all of the evens in the box. But there must be at least one even here, there must. So these, four cells contain at least three even digits. 
Uh, is that helpful? It might be. I don't know why though. Maybe it's Sudoku. <laughs> it could always be our fair weather friend Sudoku. Ones, twos, threes. Oh, three. Yeah, okay. Three is in one of those squares. I haven't spotted that before. I mean, I don't think it's going to be important, but you never know. Threes, fours. What do we know about fours? Not much. Fives, hardly anything. Sixes, sixes we know loads about, but we've got sort of X wing of sixes left. Sevens, no, we hardly know anything about sevens. Eights, again, we should know, I feel like we should know a lot about eights. Maybe we do somehow. No, okay, and nines. We've literally, yeah, we hardly know anything about nines as well. Nine, no, I was about to, no, I was about to say something that was just not right again. Okay, Codec, you've baffled me. You've fully baffled me. What, what is it that I'm meant to be spotting here? It, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's almost certain, it's got to be to do with the parity mirror. So either in box nine, either these two squares are even, in which case we've got a two, four, eight, triple like that. Is there some reason that's not allowed? Not, I mean, it might be, but I don't see what it is. Or these are all even, we've got a two, four, eight, and Two, four, eight, triple of that nature, and then these squares would have to be. That would have to be a three. Actually, I can now see three. Three is mildly restricted, isn't it? In box um, nine. So if either of these was a three, both of these would be even. If that's a three, this is odd, and is nine. I think that's three. That would have to be nine, yeah. Does that do something that breaks the world? I don't think so. If that's three, we know this is a four eight pair, which means both of these are even. Which means that one of these is a two, and one of these is a six, so this is a two six pair. Six, two, that becomes four, that becomes two. Um, I don't know if that's, I don't know, uh, oh, no, I was suddenly wondering if I could use the old diagonal trick, you know, knowing that these were a two, four pair, does that somehow limit things? I don't think so. I don't think that's important. Um, Oh, okay. I don't want to give up now. Do, I've actually, you know, we've made some progress. It's just, I think this is just a hard puzzle. Genuinely think this is a hard puzzle. The two cell arrows are very hard to get to grips with. Maybe I should turn on that thing that tells me what Sudoku I've missed. Um, no, I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. Uh, let's think. Come on. What could it be? Three, five. Ah, there's something. Where is seven in this column? It's in one of those two cells. I haven't seen that. Ah, that is interesting. Is it massive though? No, I don't think it is. But seven is now definitely in one of those two cells in row nine. Three, seven. So maybe there's something we can do. I don't know. I'm, I'm desperate. I'm, I'm trying. I really am trying to see what that might mean. But sevens are lining there. Sevens in one of these. I don't 
think this could be a seven, couldn't it? If that couldn't be seven, then that would be seven. That would at least tidy up some sevens for me. That might even then tidy up this this arrow for me. I actually I haven't thought about this arrow for a while. What's going on here? If this was seven, that's three, four. Is that breaking the world? If it's nine, is there a reason this can't be three, six, or four, five? I don't think so. Four is in one of these squares. No, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Right. One, three, seven. So five and nine. We've got to find. We've got to find better homes for. I'm just wondering whether I can use the fact that now 1, 3, and 7. You see, that square can only be 5 if it's odd. That would be really useful because it would give me a 5, 1 pair because by the parity mirror. So why is this a 5? Well, it, the fact is it could well be a 5, I think. Probably is a 5. So it would give me a 1 here, which would give me a 2 and give me an 8. That's a 4. That's a 4. That's a 4. This is a 1-2 pair. There's going to be some little nuance that stops one of these things being possible. Um, hmm... Or well, the other possibility is that there's something on one of these diagonals that I've not, I've not understood properly or realised is very limiting. But where that is, I really don't know. That digit is three or five. That's the equivalent of that one, though, isn't it? That one is the equivalent of that one. Oh, that's odd, actually. Look, is that right? Yeah, oh, this one is odd. Okay, that's something I hadn't appreciated. So this one, which can't be 1, 3, or 7, is 5 or 9 only. Wow. Now, <laughs> is that somehow relevant? Okay. So now in this column, I can see that four is at the top there. I've not put, I can't put four into these squares. So there is definitely a four in these squares. By parity mirror, that can't be a four because then that would have to be even. That's ridiculous. I mean, it's so hard to see. Although when you get it, you sort of think, well, why is that taking me so long? Um, and the answer to that is I don't know, but that's at least a little breakthrough for us. Now, oh, that being four means that's a two. Aha, two, four. Oh, I thought that was on an arrow. No, it is on an arrow. It is on an arrow. Look, that being two makes this four, which is on an arrow. So now, oh, it doesn't quite do as much as I hope, but that is now one three pair to add up to eight. So this becomes a five, which means these squares are, I don't know. Not, I don't think it is actually massive, is it? It's a little bit more progress, for sure. Um, this is now a 2, which means this is not a 2. It's not doing it, is it? It's being recalcitrant. Um, no, this, this, there's something going on in this column. 1, 3, oh, no, there isn't. There's a, oh, yeah, there is. Look. Okay, sorry. That 2 is doing something on the diagonal. So 4 and 2 go in. Now, what's this four doing? Please do something magical. Fours, what's it doing? What's it doing? Or twos, maybe twos are, twos are the correct place to look. Um, two, two is now in one of those two cells. And the equivalent of that square, one, two, three, one, two, is that one. 
Oh, so if that was two, that we would know. There must be an even digit in these two squares. So the, oh, which is, yeah, well, we sort of know that, don't we? We know there's a four in one of those squares, so that's not surprising. Um, okay, two, four, six, eight. So we know these are, we know these are odd digits and we know they're not one so they're from three five seven and nine we know that that's not five or seven so that's come right down that's three or nine three two one two three nine one two and nine into these because three is not available so three is definitely in one of those squares um is this good it's so close to having something in this column, isn't it? Um, uh, what could it be? Did we say, what did we say about those two? We said there had to be at least one even, didn't we? Uh, this could still be six, two, I think. Uh, we do know there's a three in one of those. Okay, wow, still it resists, you rotten, rotten puzzle. Come on, give me something now. Uh, well, so what was useful was trying to trace round the odd, you know, the pa tracing round across the parity mirror. So we probably need to do that again, somehow. I, I don't know, I don't know where the weak point is though, I really don't, and three, Really don't. Um, seven, three, five, or eight. Oh, look, I've got a one, three. How long has that been there? Oh no, not long. I've just found a one, three pair in this on this diagonal because of this four, and that's going to get me. That gives me an eight here, and it gives me a five here. Now that's got to be. That's got to be massive, surely. I can see one thing that does, but I want to just have a check. Uh, one, one, two, uh, one, two, one, two. That digit is now odd across the parity mirror to this digit, isn't it? So it can't be six. So that's got to be six, which means that's six and that's four, which means four is now in one of those squares. I have seen one other thing, actually. Um, now, if that's eight, by the way, What's the equivalent of that square? It is, no, oh, that's the same point. I've seen one other thing though as well. I have seen one more thing. And that is that this square now is not five. And that was one of the digits we were looking at for these two squares. This digit now is even because it can't be one, three, five, seven or nine. So that's even, so it's two, four, six, or eight, which is not six, look, it's not two, so it's four or eight, so that's even, which is two or eight. <laughs> so these two are both even, that's even. So one of these is even, that is true. One of these is definitely even. Oh, it nearly can't be that one, please. Is there a reason that can't be a two? <laughs> Because this digit can't be four, six, or eight. So the only thing even digit it could be is two. Oh, but look, no two is in one of these three squares. So that's perfectly possible. Oh, one. One I've suddenly seen. Look, um, th this being even made this not one. And now I've got one in one of those and one in one of these, which means neither of these can be one. And I've got a two nine pair and this has become a one, which means that's one and that's three which means that's three, this might do something. Um, three might do something, three, one. Yes, that's become seven, one, four, three. Now that digit we know is the same as that one. That's odd, so nine and two go in. That's become a seven by Sudoku. This two means that's no longer a two. That's no longer a two. It's still not getting to the nitty gritty of what we need though, I don't think. Um, so one, two, three, five, this square is two or three. No, it's not seven. It's not seven. Two 
two or three. Can we do it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, two, three, four, and eight in this row. That is square is three or eight. Um, we can probably do some parity stuff from what we've just learned, though, surely. Surely, he said. Um, I don't know, maybe we can't. Uh, what about this row? We need five, eight, and nine. So these are from five, eight, and nine. Do we know the parent? No. Do we know the parent of that? No. <laughs> uh, this is one, five. Ah, that, that can't be three anymore. That's probably been available for a while. So three in this box, I think, is up here now. Is that? In fact, what is this digit then? Four, seven, and nine, isn't it? So these are from four, seven, and nine. That's not seven. So that one and that one have the same parity. But all of these seem to have loads of options still. I don't understand. What about those two? What's the equivalent of those two? Hang on, my um, Oh, look. Oh, no, we still don't know what this arrow's doing. I don't believe it. Um, sorry, and where was I looking? I was trying to work out what the equivalent of this digit is. It's that one, isn't it? So yeah, okay, so we know these are all odd, which is absolutely fine. Um, what about, we've got quite a lot of odd, ah, no, still not good enough. I need to put eight into this column. It's got two possible positions, which means one of these two squares is even, which we can already see is the case because one of these must be an eight. Oh, here's the point. Here, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, Kodak, that's such a lovely finish. It's such a clever finish. Right, remember, we've got two even digits along this diagonal. So either both of those are even, or both of these are even. And if both of those are even, they're both the same even digit. They both have to be eight, so they cannot both be eight. Neither of them can be eight. So that's got to be three. That's two, that's one, that's eight, that's two. That's such a clever idea. It really is. That is not eight anymore. Uh, that's now needs to have a positive, uh, even parity. So that's now become a four. Seven, nine pair means this is a five. That's an eight. Now that, okay, which is, is sort of resolving, isn't it? So this has become a five. I hope we can do these sevens and nines. The three and the five at the top are resolved by this three, so that's not three. Uh, one five means this is nine. This is five, this is three, this is seven. Oh, hang on, is that right? That might be wrong. That's three fives, there's a seven nine pair here. The one and the five are resolved. Two, four, that's eight. Okay, of course. Oh, I see. And then this arrow is what tells us how the sevens and nines work. Three plus four is seven. That's going to give us a nine here, a nine here, a nine here, a seven here, a seven here, a seven here, a nine here, a nine here, and a seven here. Wow, what a clever puzzle. Let's see. Yes, the solution is correct. So it might be correct. 29 people have solved it in eight days. What a puzzle. That's an hour and a half. What a full workout for my new computer. Well done, computer, for um, still going. Fantastic. Badminton by Codec. We were bouncing back and forward across that diagonal. Seriously clever, seriously difficult. Was it, did I make it? I probably did. I think it exploited every weak spot I had because you have to keep very careful track across the, 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 the badminton net. And it's very hard to do that while thinking about Sudoku, parity, this funny box logic, the funny arrow logic. Ah! You broke my head, Kodak. This was meant to be a holiday. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Let me know how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.